What's up viewers? Have you got a new caravan or a new to you caravan? One of the first things you need to organize is security. Come with me, I'm gonna show you what we're fitting to our new caravan, give you some tips along the way. The first thing we're gonna do is fit a hitch lock. And the first thing that you need to do before buying a lock is know which model hitch head you have. Now this is one of the most common ones on new caravans, it's an AKS 2004 slash 3004. But if you look on the side of your hitch head, you'll see the model number embossed. And from there, you can determine which hitch lock will fit your caravan hitch head. The lock that I've decided to go for is the Alco Premium Hitch Lock made by Alco themselves. This is a very solid and very heavy piece of kit. So one thing you need to be aware of is when it's not fitted to the caravan whilst you're towing, don't be tempted to put it in the front cubby because this could have a big impact on your nose weight. Not the cheapest on the market. It is probably maybe the most expensive, but um, once you've done your risk assessment of what kind of security you think you might need for your caravan, um, certainly for me, I think this is a, a good investment. I'll put links in the description to this hitch lock. Fitting this lock is super simple. First thing, stabilize the bar up and handle down. If that's in the locked open position, just close that down. The lock goes straight over the top of the handle. No need to lift the handle, hook it into place. Go straight over the top. Push the pin in from the other side with the gap in the pin into the lock first. Insert the key, turn and push the lock in. That's it, all done. One of the great things about this lock is you can connect this whilst the caravan is hitched to the car. You can also, if you wish to, leave this lock in place whilst towing because the stabilizer bar does go down fully. Now, whether you want to or not, that's down to you. For me personally, I don't put the lock on whilst towing, but of course, when you go to the services, you want to put this lock on uh, when it's left unattended. The next thing we're going to do is the wheel lock. Now, this is the standard Alco wheel lock. You may or may not have seen one of these before. If you have seen one before, you'll know how much of a faff it is to use. So therefore I've decided to go for the Nemesis Ultra. I've used this before and it's a great product. It's really simple to fit. Uh, once you've done the setup, which might take around 10 minutes, it's 10 seconds to fit and remove. So this is the one I'm gonna use. Now I'm gonna give you a top tip on this. I've watched all the YouTube videos showing people fitting them, including Purple Line themselves, the manufacturer. And all of the videos have omitted one step, which I think is really important. I'm gonna show you the whole process including the one step I think they've missed. Okay, first step is to remove one of the existing wheel studs and it doesn't really matter which one you remove at all. So I'm just gonna go for this one. The next step is to fit the receiver that comes with the Nemesis. Now there's two receivers. They're the same thread pattern, same shape here, but one is slightly thinner than the other one and one slightly shorter. So depending on which wheel you have, depends on which one of the receivers. And I'm gonna go for the smaller of the two. So you can hand tighten that in first of all. I'm going to put this in the Nemesis carrier box. The next step is to tighten this with the adapter that comes with it. This slots in there and then your regular 19 millimeter wheel brace can tighten that up. Now of course, very important, we're going to check the torque of this and make sure it's set correctly. I've checked the plate and it says for alloy wheels 130 newton meters. So using the adapter in there and a 19 mil socket on the end, we're going to tighten that up until we get to 130, which is there. And just out of interest, we're going to just double check the rest of them as well. That's it. 
all set. When you have a look at the lock body, you'll notice there's a grub screw and an extra hole. Don't think that there's a grub screw missing, there was only one. If you need it to move to this hole, you just move that grub screw over to the next hole. And the other thing to consider is that there's a notch in the side of the lock. There's a notch in the side of the lock just there. And the grub screw should align with that notch as well. So let's get this fitted and show you the bit that people have omitted in other videos. We want to put the lock in and loosely tighten the grub screw. Remember that we want this aligned to the notch on the lock. And I can see it through the other grub screw, screw hole, but I'm not going to tighten it up too much just so it can slide in and out. I'm going to put the key in. and it's unlocked, push it into place, and lock. Now, what the other videos are telling you to do is push that into place, and then tighten now your grub screw. I haven't put the bar on, of course, we'll do that later. So we tighten the grub screw, and that's a lovely tight fit. Now, what happens if somebody comes along and loosens your grub screw completely out? Might have access to an Allen key, all of a sudden, we've got a lot of play in there, which means that a crowbar of some kind could get in. I think the more play that you've got, the more leverage, more chance that this could be broken off. We're going to just tighten this grub screw up. It's easier to unlock it when that's tightened up. I'm going to take the lock off. Now you saw how much play I had there. What we're going to do now is we're going to add shims onto the lock. And I think off the top of my head, we had about that much play. This is my scientific way of doing it. Put the shims onto the lock. Put the lock back into the body. Remembering to align. Remembering to align the grub screw. Now, what we can do is try that again. There we go, we're on. No movement whatsoever there. Let's loosen the grub screw again. And we're down to about three millimeter movement now. So I'm going to add one more shim in place. Again, here's the top tip. When you're doing this adjustment, it is easier just to lock the lock in place. Otherwise the whole thing turns and you can't unlock it. We're going to try one more. Push that into place, lock with the grub screw. We're down to about one millimeter of play now, which I think is okay. You don't want it too tight. If it gets too tight, you might find it difficult to remove it. So we're gonna tighten up the grub screw again. Remove the lock. We're gonna tighten that up a bit more. And now we can fit the bar. The bar goes into the gap, slides down. Generally, this bar can go anywhere. It doesn't affect the chassis on this vehicle. If you do have problems with it fouling onto the chassis, then just go to the lower half like that. But anywhere is fine. And if you need to slide that up slightly, that's fine. Push it into place, lock, and that's it done. And then of course, the final step, it's getting a bit windy here, so we might have some wind noise, is the protective cover. And that's it fitted. If you think that it's too loose, 
you think it can go a bit tighter, just try another shim, make sure that it's not too tight. So there you go, we've set our shims, we've locked the grub screw in place, and now we're ready to fit. Slide the bar in, into there, into the wheel, push on, lock, remove key. To remove, pull the center of that, locate the lock, the key, remove. It's that simple. There you have it, first step, security done. Now the thing to remember, his caravan security is a deterrent. If somebody's very, very determined to steal the caravan, then unfortunately, there's a good chance they're gonna steal it. But if you've got something visual, uh, something that's gonna take quite some time and also a lot of noise to remove, then that's gonna hopefully deter them from stealing your caravan. If you have fitted a Nemesis Ultra yourself before, then uh, have a look at it. See if you fitted the shims. Let me know in the comments if you needed shims or didn't need shims or didn't know about the shims. I've put links in the description to the two products we've fitted today. If you've got any questions, put it in the comments below. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.